Yes. Well, our next session is an inter-college debate. The topic for the debate will be skill building is the raison d'etre of education. We have 10 participants from different colleges, five of whom will speak for and five who will speak against the topic. Well, I can feel the pulse racing, the adrenaline pumping among the participants. So without further delay, let us now take the plunge. The judges I would like to introduce. We have Ms. Geeta Narayanan, Director, Shrishti School of Art, Design and Technology, and Mr. Shankar Ayer, Author, Analyst. The moderator for this session will be Shilpa Vasudevan and the timekeeper, Suraksha. We already have the participants on stage. Let's hear a huge round of applause for them, please. All the best to you and may the best win. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you the participants. To my left is the four team. We have Manaswini, a psychology student from Women's Christian College. We have Arunima Ghosh, a journalism student from MOP Vaishnav College. We have another journalism student, Priyadashni Patwa from Asian College of Journalism. We have an MBA student, Anjul Hans from Great Lakes Institute of Management. Ayush Bhargava is the computer science engineering student from IIT Madras. And to introduce you to the uh, participants who will be going against the motion, we have Apurva Ramachandran, an economic student from Stella Maris, Chennai. We have Ujwala Verma, a medicine student from Chetinad Hospital and Research Institute. We have Pavan, a computer science student from Shastra University. We have Amit Anthony, a computer science student from VIT Chennai. And we have Mohammed Abbas, an aerospace engineering student from SRM University. Let me also get, bring, you up, bring you guys up to speed with the rules. We'll begin with the four team. Each participant will have five minutes. We'll have a warning bell at the end of four minutes. And then you'll have one more minute to go. And you know, then we'll continue with the uh, again speaker and we'll alternate till all the ten participants have spoken. After which we'll have the rebuttal arguments and this will be taken on by the side against the motion. Uh, there are a few things to keep in mind. You cannot bring in new issues at the stage of rebuttal. And you will, uh, mere criticizing the other team will not do good. You have to tell us why the other side is wrong. And you also have to keep in mind that you should not criticize the speaker but only what they are saying. Let me also give you guys the mark structure. You'll get 30 each for argumentation and refutation and 20 each for structure and presentation. If Ayush is ready, we could start it right away. Yeah, please. Check, check. Good afternoon. They say what sculpture is to a block of marble, education is to the human soul. Firstly, let me begin with asking the question, what is education? Education is derived from the Latin words educatum and educare. Educare means to train and mold, while educatum symbolizes the act of teaching. Thus, inherently, education is involved in training the individuals and society to achieve a goal or aspirations that they have. Similarly, in Hindi, shiksha is derived from the Sanskrit word shash, which means to control or train. Thus, inherently, the de basic definition of education believes and nurtures the act of training and molding. Great educators from the West and the East have been very lucid and clear in their notion of education. Swami Vivekananda believes and says that education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man. Like fire in the flint, knowledge already exists in the mind. It is only suggestion that acts as a friction and brings it out. Similarly, Rosu believes that education is the development of a child from within. Thus, universally, it has been accepted that education is the pursuit of wholeness, a harmonious development which develops the four dimensions of life, 
social, moral, mental and physical. Now, let me define what is a skill. A skill is the ability or capacity to perform a complex activity involving ideas, involving people, involving things in a very systematic and organized manner. Skills could range in a multitude of activities and dimensions, like skills could be cognitive to creative, they could be experimental to exploratory, they could be interpersonal to team building. Now that we've defined what a skill is and have given you the purpose of education, I think it is very evident that skill building is the reason for existence of education. Now let me move on to my second argument and deep dig into what are the various skills that are required and necessary for the harmonious living of our society. Skills could be divided into a variety of skills. One, labor skills. These skills are very specific to one's occupation. For example, if one is an electrician, a plumber, a farmer or a teacher, he requires labor skills. Two, life skills. These are the skills which one needs for his day-to-day -day situations and how to deal with problems every day. Third, people skills. How to build trustworthy and healthy relationships with people. Fourth, soft skills and social skills, how to communicate with people and facilitate teamwork. And fifth, hard skills, which are very specific to a task that has to be performed. Thus, all these skills clearly are very, very important in the, in the existence of the society. And I believe that education is a platform, a common platform which can inculcate all of these. Now, let me move on to my third argument, which believes and motivates the nature of education in itself. Education is considered to be a lifelong and continuous process. It starts from the womb of the mother until a person dies. Education is supposed to be purposive, which means that we as people and as individuals have dreams and aspirations that which, which we need to attain and education helps us achieve this. Education is bipolar and dynamic. It keeps changing from time to time as we progress. Education is growth. Or our development of knowledge on these facts and a communicator of knowledge is essentially a person who is able to effectively understand what he's told and communicate his ideas with his peers and a creator of knowledge is a person who can work at the edge of what they know to construct reconstruct and co-construct new knowledge and greater understanding and development uh, moving on uh, the dangers in teaching a skills only curriculum or one that is very biased to knowledge uh, is students spend a lot of time discovering what we already know. We need students to look beyond what is already present and explore new possibilities. To conclude, I would like to say that all successful adults need to be able to make connections between very different types of information and bring it together to create new knowledge. Therefore, there are four dimensions needed in a 21st century curriculum of education. Uh, knowledge, skills, character and this meta layer I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, Pavan. I give you Anurima Ghosh from MOP Vaishnav Kaur. Education is not preparation for life, but education is life itself. John Dewey. Good evening to all of you. I'm Anurima from MOP Vaishnav College, and I'm extremely glad to have been speaking today. Kamraj, our ex-chief minister of Tamil Nadu, he was a great personality, but he didn't have an educational degree. But that didn't stop this mighty personality from giving his ideas, his skill of speaking in public, his skill of executing plans. Now, if a, such a great man with no educational degree, but such amazing skill can do such brilliant work for a state, you can only imagine what education and skill combined can actually do. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it defines education as the knowledge, skill, and understanding that you get from attending a school, college, or university. Now, this explains that skill is a part of education. Now, in the current scenario, when I did my schooling and presently doing my college and pursuing my BA journalism, we understand one simple thing that skill is necessary. Even for the basic moving society, we need that skill to survive. Now, most of us think cooking, at one point we thought cooking was a skill only for women back then. But now we know cooking is a skill for survival. I read this really funny post on uh, Facebook, I think, and it said, feminism nor sexism will actually give you food when you're starving. 
Cooking is a skill. It's a survival skill. What education is currently trying to do is give you that survival technique. It's teaching you. It can be in the, in the technical term. It can be just interpersonal relationship. Now, I'm focusing on communication language skills. Now, in school, we do remember how teachers used to have drama plays and they used to have uh, speech competitions, extempo competitions. At that point, we were thinking, maybe, wow, maybe this is a daunting task. Why is the teacher doing this to us? Anyway, we're writing exams. Why should we grade it for something like that? But if you're not good at something, you work on it. And speaking in public is a skill. It takes a lot of effort to go out there and speak. So it helps you build confidence. It helps you give you that art of speaking. You're also performing. So you learn the skill of being there and enacting situations you never thought you would be able to do. A lot of times when we are outside or we're talking to somebody, we're not, we don't know very well. So we tend, to, how do you talk to a person? How do you talk to a senior more person? How do you talk to your boss? Now that is something that's not instinctive. Some, that's something you have to think about a lot. What the schools, are, schools and colleges are now doing is giving you that opportunity to understand the kind of tone you can use with somebody you don't really know. Second point is uh, I'm trying to make is about how many of you have read uh, Poor Dad, Rich Dad? It's by Robert Kiyosaki. And he mentions a very, very important point in his book, which says children should be taught the skill of money management. A lot of us don't have that skill because we think um, we have a lot of money, but how, what does it matter? Why should, I, why should I bother learning it now? I'm only 15, I'm only 16. No, it helps. Your basic 200 rupees, how are you going to save that 200 rupees? Earlier, we didn't know of this, but now schools and colleges are teaching the technique of saving money. It, I, I did an, uh, a course on stock investment and uh, other investment courses. That's a way of saving money. That's telling you, this, giving you the skill of how do you put your money in place. And I think that's a great way of, for today's generation, even for an entrepreneur who wants to go and reach out to the world, needs money. So how are you going to plan that money? How are you, you going to plan your business? So that's a skill that comes. I believe that every little thing may not be very important now, but at a later stage, it's going to give you a lot of reward. And at one point, computer was not important. Our parents' generation, they didn't, they didn't think computers were important. But suddenly, it took the world by storm. Computers came in, internet came in. And then everyone was flabbergasted. Everybody didn't know what to do, how to work on it. So, so they got replaced by people who knew the skill. Now, so, they, so the previous generation had to cope up with the, gen, the, the, pre, the present generation and had to figure out how do they make it still work in their organization. Every little skill in a beautiful way can lead to your survival. It gives you an opportunity to get out there. Entrepreneurs have knowledge, have an idea, but do they have the skill? So when, when ideas and skill come together and when they improvise on that skill, that's when you get a brilliant nation with brilliant innovators. Thank you. Thank you, Anurima. Next, we have on stage Amit Anthony from VIT Chennai. Yeah, okay. Um, I would like to start with a quote that once my father had said, Beta, degree to mil jayega, but agar company mein kaam karna hai na, to fir you need to start getting some skills up, okay? For the uninitiated in Hindi, basically what he said was, you'll get a degree. There's no issue in that. But then, to work in a company, you seriously need to get some soft skills and management skills. One thing why I quoted my dad, well, the reason is simple. My father was willing to shell out lakhs of rupees for quality education, but he had extremely little faith in what the college would do and whether they would give me those skills required to work in that company. That is the very problem that we students are facing today. The pull between acquiring those skills and the mockery of an education which puts us down the path of rote learning. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here in front of you to tell you that no, Skill building is not the reason debt of education. We live in a world where facts and methods are given some priority over hands-on learning experience. Take the scenario with the famous rat race that everyone nearly knows of. At the end, what happens in the rat race? One single winner comes out. And what is he? An ugly stinking rat. 
What do you expect? Why are we not producing eagles or falcons that should actually be killing that rat? What, shouldn't we all be expecting something like that? Shouldn't we be working towards soaring those great heights that actually an eagle can soar to? Ever since a young age, we have been encouraged to read books on moral and wisdom. The Panchatantra, the Amajitra Katha that I've been reading since a small kid, all used to have the same background basically. A guy used to be dumb or did not have any knowledge, he used to have something happen in his life, and then at the end, boom, he gets wisdom. Come to the real scenario, and you see everyone is still working on education, but at the end, are we gaining wisdom? Are we gaining any morals or any ethics and values? I think not. A lot of work needs to be done on our education so that the system works in tandem with gaining skills. Take for example the recent controversial video that most of you might have watched on the All India Bhaktchod. Now what happened over there was Ranveer Kapoor came up and got humiliated you could say but one point could be put up over it. The guy was a 12th standard failure and yet he was there on stage and gaining money over it for getting himself laughed at. Now isn't that a certain skill that he's acquired? I mean, doesn't that work in his own favor at the end of the day? You see, gaining skills has nothing to do with education. At best, it's like a little tick box on a no, bucket list. Okay, a tick box, I got my B.Tech degree. Now what? Are we gaining any skills? I think so not. And the list keeps on going on. We have Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, even Narendra Modi as a matter of fact. I mean, before the elections, he was called the Chaiwala and now what? He's an amazing prime minister with amazing oratory skills and he can you know, combine, combine a billion people to lead a nation towards success. I mean, that also takes some skill, right? And he did not have any education that people are saying. Want another example for what an education doesn't equip us with a basic skill? Like what the lady over here from MOP had said, money. People over here, uh, people in school are not, being learned, uh, are not being able to learn exactly how to work on a check on making a demand draft or even filing, filing in taxes. Sure, we're kids, we might not need to learn about taxes at the moment, but when will you ever learn it? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still right now a college student, but I will only be probably learning about income tax and all the certain terms on that day when I have to fill in my first income tax filing. That's the problem over here. Schools should be working towards making this an essential requirement. Children need to learn on financial, or financial etiquettes and financial planning exactly. You know, you actually want to know why we have so much of black money running around in India? It's basically because we still do not know how to file in our own income tax. Education is the mean of gaining knowledge, but it takes creative minds to apply that knowledge in real life. That is the problem. Skill building and knowledge are going parallelly and working in tandem. They are not intersecting with each other and at all working towards creating what we want. And also, again, another point that was put up by the lady from MOP on John Dewey's quote, education is not preparing us for life, but education is life itself. But I want to end by saying this, that if education was life itself, then why the, hus why the hassle for acquiring skills? Education should have solved all the life problems by now. The need of the R is to work on a definition of education in our Indian society. It's, I don't think we can see a prospective solution to the problem at hand in the close future. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. And to give you guys Manaswini Prasanna psychology on the top. Good evening. I'm Manaswini from Women's Christian College. I'm the last speaker for the topic education. Skill building is a race on the ether of education. All of us here went to schools. Most of us here are studying in colleges. So why are we paying so much money to get into the top institutions of the world? Let's all be honest. We want to get a good job. We want, we want to earn the top money. And we want to live a happy, successful life. We want to sit in a corporate office. We want to earn big bucks. And we want to earn fat checks. What is wrong in that? OK, so what is education? Is education just going to class, attending lectures, sitting in labs, writing records, wearing lab coats, getting yelled at by teachers? Psychology today defines education as the follows. Education should be about helping people create a mindset that would enable them to build an integral and holistic understanding of society, 
realize their unique potential and find their place in the society. To simplify this definition, education should help us understand society, realize how unique we are, and combine the two to help us find place in the society. Let me oversimplify this. Basically, education should help us with developing our social skills, our personal skills, and our interpersonal skills. So our personal skills are divided into hard skills and soft skills. So there are a certain set of skills we can learn only if we go to colleges or only if we go to schools. They are very specific to a profession. These are our hard skills. Then we have the soft skills. Soft skills are our communication, language, critical thinking, reasoning, personal habits, friendliness, the way we talk to people, etc. What are social skills? They are the interaction and the communication that we have with others. That is how we respond to other people. Next, we have interpersonal skill. That is how we can relate to one another and how we can fit into the society. These are the four basic skills required to survive in this world. We are all born with a certain set of skills. It is how we use them, how we develop these skills, and how we get to the top that matters. So how do we develop these skills? The answer is right in front of you. Education. We get educated. Dictionary.com defines education as follows. Education is the act or process of imparting or acquiring a particular knowledge or a skill as for a profession. Okay, let's say I want to become an engineer. I have to go to school. I have to get to college to get an engineering degree. So these are the hard skills. It includes a specific knowledge and the abilities required for success in a job. For most jobs, while the hard skills are necessary to sit in the interview, it is the soft skills that is going to get you the job. As one of my fellow contestants said, education is not preparation for life. It is life itself. Soft skills are something we learn every day. Education for these skills begin at home. For example, when your mom tells you not to hit your sibling, or she asks you to clean your room, or your dad tells you to make a timetable for the day, or asks you not to nudge your sibling nearby, he's basically teaching you soft skills. These soft skills, they get further improved when you go to school, when you go to college, when you talk to your peers, when you communicate with your teachers. These play a very important role in providing us with an opportunity to gain greater social and emotional awareness. Okay, from the job perspective, employers want someone who won't just do the job. They want someone who will fit into the company and who will make a good impression on clients. In the Indian education setting, getting the top grades alone seem to suffice for getting a job. Slowly but surely, this scenario is changing. Education teaches you to identify your skills. It teaches you to develop your skill. It teaches you when to use what skill. And it teaches you how to combine skills to lead a successful life. So, let us all take a stand here and choose to be well-educated rather than well-trained. Thank you. Thank you, Manasmini. Lastly, we have Mohammed Yasub Abbas from SRM University. Okay, um, so who am I and how I wonder will this story end? Short story which encapsulates a period of 14 long years. A chilly winter morning of December. The sun hasn't come out from behind the clouds in the frosty atmosphere and I am sitting by a window that is foggy with a breath of life gone by. For once, all emotions, simple yet complex, evoke me. And soon, the safe. Preserving my most precious assets, my memories are torpedoed by a wave of nostalgia and the barred, chained, safe explodes. Well, memories come rushing upon me and overtake the reins of the stubborn, sensible mind that knows not to halt but to rush into the hush for the achievement of something or the other. Memories of the good old school days, memories about the good old education system. Well, the topic of today's discussion reminds me the way they used to weigh hogs in Texas. They would get a long plank, put it over a crossbar, and somehow tie the hog onto one end of the plank. 
Then they would search all around till they found a stone of the similar weight and tie it to the other end of the plank. And then they would guess the weight of the stone. Well, I hope that you people will understand what I'm trying to say because I'm not here to give a speech. I'm not good at giving speeches. In fact, I don't like people who give speeches, they take too much time. I saw the speakers before me and I was mesmerized. I've not seen so much passion for a long time. But I've heard from the people that all that you talk about the education system is useless because things have been the same way. You can do whatever you want, but things will never change. This is the way we are. But when I see the speakers and the rapt attention which you gave them, my heart goes out and I know that the system will change. The system will definitely change and the system will change well before the people who think that the system won't. That day will come. Ladies and gentlemen, members in the dais, organizers of this great conclave and the fellow speakers, I commend each one of you for taking out a precious time and participating in this great event. This is absolutely tremendous. Now, we have been asked to talk upon the topic um, that skill building is the raison d'etre of education. I'm so sorry about the topic because like, I'm not very good with the French thing. Okay. Now, I stand here to present my views firmly against the motion. Well, this side of the debate seems logically harder. Before we focus on the band-aid of the argument, let me clear out a few words, skill, the ability to do something really well, building, development of something over a period of time, raison d'etre, the reason for the existence and education, the process of receiving or giving systematic instruction. Now coming back to the epicenter of the topic, in the first speaker I would just quote something that education is more than teaching a man how to fish. Okay. The introduction of the concept of education is originated around the imbibing of knowledge. Skill building, in essence, is only an application of this knowledge. Education is a method by which society describes the students its rules of survival. This implies that education imparts values, etiquettes, societal expectations, obligations, and duties. So education makes good social human beings. Skill building is not the reason for education. There can be always people who are like more intelligent, but still not as smart as people in the respective fields. Now let's, let's take a very small example, a card mechanic. He has never stepped into school. He is illegible or maybe he is quite low in his intellectual capacity. However, he has mastered the job of a mechanic. Therefore, my father, a sound lawyer with sound educational background, relies on the advice given by the, the car mechanic on the engine problem. So, education is a primal in evolution of the mentality of any society. It gives way to talk about like, issues like politics, social evils, technology, finance, etc. It's the culmination of global information. And to view education solely for the purpose of skill building is derogatory to the concept of human learning and curiosity. Because let's face it, if simply reading was a skill needed, the world wouldn't be a place for the doers. Now taking some very famous examples, Albert Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, William Shakespeare, Henry Ford, Mark Twain, Steve Jobs, John Glenn, and the list goes on. These are very famous people who have changed the world, not so because of the great education. Well, talking on the grounds of humanity, there are instances that educated people get inspired by the not so educated ones who influence us over a great sense of humanity. Today, I might be an educated person standing here among you elite people discussing this debate topic. But however, it was my grandmother who never attended the school who influenced all my academic accomplishments. So coming to the end of the topic, I would request a proposition not to disguise the topic through any kind of esoteric or academic argument. Because whom you might be providing an ideological support, knowingly or unknowingly, voluntarily or involuntarily, Consciously or unconsciously, directly or indirectly, the same people, the same set of people might be out of your grasp and they might not be as ideologically driven as you might imagine them to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. And we shall begin the refutal argument starting from the again side. Okay, so basically what I see from all five speakers, their argument is skill building is the reason that we have education. But at no point they tell me why knowledge takes the back seat over skill building. And they came and talked to you about these different types of skills like social skills, soft skills, technical skills, etc. But ladies and gentlemen, one thing is pretty clear. All these skills are basically useless if you have nothing to communicate, if you have nothing to use that knowledge, to use that skill to put to effectively. If you don't have anything, what I've come and told you is 
knowledge will necessitate skill building at the end because you need to convert an idea to reality. So when they come and tell you that John Dewey says that education is not preparation for life and education is life itself and the other speaker comes and tells you that everybody wants to be employable and earn better. Are we equating life to only being able to earn better? Where does personal growth and personal development come? So if I have a domestic worker who isn't even aware of their rights, who, is, who doesn't know that they are not allowed to be abused, they still have the skill. Are we defining them to be educated? Because of course, by their definition, it's okay that they don't know their rights. It's okay that they don't understand what's happening in the society and this is not done. It is okay because they're still skilled. Now, when they come and tell you, when the second speaker came and told you about how the army man and the doctor needs a particular skill, ladies and gentlemen, there is no use if they don't know why this particular service is being done. When there is a propagation of knowledge as to why defense is required, why we need medicine, it is more effective and then at that particular point will that skill be put to use effectively. Now, I'd like to end by saying this. We know our country is not capable of having twofold goals where we say that education and uh, skill building is on the same level. Now what I'm telling you is this, knowledge will lead to skill building eventually because skill building is the byproduct of knowledge. So knowledge is essentially the raison d'etre of education. Thank you. Yeah, I have a doubt. You. I have a very small doubt. Uh, I guess that this was wrong for the question answers and not for speaking for like another two minutes. So where was the, where was the question in the entire speech? Like. It's like a finishing statement. I thought that we were told that for these two minutes we can ask questions to the person who's. Ask the other team to respond to you. If you guys would like to respond to Apur Apurva. Well, I would like to respond to one of your queries where you said that uh, if you do not have knowledge, what would you do with the skill? Well, skill is just like a container. I have water. I do not have a container to put that water in. What would I do with this? I would not be able to do anything with that. <laughs> Skill is the container which you would use, which you would use to actually apply knowledge. Going by your definition, what's the use of having the very container if you don't have water in it at all? There is no use of having this particular container if you have nothing to pour it into. So by that definition, if I have knowledge, I will know that it needs a container to bring it to reality and I will make sure that that particular container comes into place and thus articulating it to reality, right? So that's my point. Knowledge building is more essential than skills. Well, if you do not have a structure where you put in, what will you do with that? Going by, how would you say that skill building is more important than education when you have the container and no water in it? How would you, you would require some sort of understanding of what skill, what you need for the skill for, which is basically knowledge. I would right? give you another example. Let's take the example of information and data. You have a lot of data. You go to Google, you have a lot of data, but you do not know what it is. Again, unless and until you have the information, you won't be able to work with it. Isn't information knowledge and not a skill? Information would be actually a skill in that particular case. Sir, I like the way you actually are trying to personify the things in the form of a container or the air bubble or something like that. But I have a very important question for you. You stated in your speech that um, when a person is doing an MBBS degree, the skill he acquires is not to be afraid of a dead body. Did you seriously, like, what did you seriously mean by that? That the skill you acquire while doing, like, while pursuing an MBBS degree is not to be afraid of a dead body. Uh, and adding to his point, you also mentioned that education makes you more employable and make you earn better. So you're restricting education, and you also said that job and money leads to better life. So you're restricting education to just a job and money. So can you please explain yourself? I'm not restricting education to just job and money, but you, that is the most essential thing. Job and money leads to better life. I would again like to repeat my friend's point. His dad also quoted the same thing. So I guess you spoke way before than him, so you actually cannot quote what his dad said. So <laughs> that point is not into the rep. And, and you also mentioned. Okay, okay. Uh, 
Yes. So the participants would like to sum up their refutal statements. Yeah. Respected judges and my dear friends, coming to my rebuttal. It is a very well known statement that India is a knowledge based economy. But nobody has ever said that India is a skill based economy. Because when you say education, you automatically associate it with knowledge. As my colleague said, Dr. Manmohan Singh said that India is a knowledge country. I am afraid he's defeated his own argument because if skill development is the raison d'etre of education, then why is everybody talking about knowledge and not skill? My colleagues on the other side also said that for a doctor, skills are essential. I, my profession is that, a doctor, and I have been there. Skills are no doubt essential, but if you don't have the knowledge, you cannot apply the skill. Supposing you want to treat the internal carotid artery and end up ligating the internal jugular vein, won't you kill the patient? You need to have a certain amount of knowledge. Only if you have knowledge on which you can build skill, can you become the Michael Debucky of surgery or the Albert Einstein of 2015. She also said that Kamraj did not have an education degree. So he was not taught skill development, it was an inborn talent. I had already mentioned that poetry, philosophy are inborn talents. They cannot be taught by skill development. Any other person taught oratorical skills might not have reached Kamraj's level because he may not have had the talent. I conclude by saying that our respected Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi said, make in India, implying that a certain level of originality is needed. He did not say work in India. Thank you. I would like to I would like to start off by saying something as simple as greeting your guru before you start is standing testimony that education is much more than skills. Okay, as speaker too mentioned, you said technically sound and more employable and earning better is and, and job and money leads to better life. So uh, you're being very specific about education. It is just one part of education that you're talking about, but education is much more. And uh, if you've noticed, all of your definitions of education included knowledge and skills. So skills, uh, so education cannot be just for the sake of skills. Knowledge is also an integral part of education. Uh, for example, speaker five. Speaker five talks about, uh, I mean, sorry, speaker four talks about uh, the definition of Miriam Webster where she says that knowledge, skill and understanding form education, but not only skill. So that is a point that you have to note. And uh, you, uh, yeah, so, uh, and speaker number five spoke about acquiring particular knowledge or skill again. And to fit in the society, it is not a skill. It is more of a character where you can fit into society. And uh, to end, I would like to say, knowledge and skills obviously go together. Uh, but more emphasis on knowledge and facts cannot necessarily be a bad idea. Because knowledge builds on knowledge. The more you know, the more you're able to learn. And the more you learn, the more you're able to apply. And that is the real outcome of education. Thank you. I'd like to start with a few points. I mean, just little, little, one totally about five points there. Uh, I do not exactly know which all speakers spoke these points, but I'll just put them to the whole team itself. Um, so, uh, one of the speakers had mentioned about in Institute of Hotel Management, the Military Academy, vocational courses, the Aviation Academy and all. Now, uh, you're, you, in your speech, you had exactly told what all skills were happening over there, but nothing about the education and what exactly are you going to be gaining out of it. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be, if you're going by your own definition of education and it should be working towards lifelong learning, then where is that ha exactly happening with using those skills? You're just going to be using those skills for the specific applications, but you're not going towards for looking towards the future and not going for the bigger picture over here. So one question, one one point would be towards that. And also, speaker one had mentioned something about bipolar, uh, uh, the education being bipolar, and that and that it keeps on changing. Then how do you expect education? to be the bridge towards learning all these skills that we want to require. That is an important question that I'd like to put up. And also, uh, on the Kamraj point, it is totally for us. As in, Kamraj, he did not have any education and yet he was able to get, get this across because he had skills. That is our point and that being put up by the proposition is kind of preposterous. That's one thing I'd like to state. And also on the point on everyone wanting the fat checks and wanting the money and that we should not be embarrassed by it, get an MBA. 
are you going to be mocking your own uh, are, you, are you going to be mocking your own, your own education over this and not wanting to acquire those own skills like what the proposition the, like you uh, as the proposition team is expecting to be done and also all five te all five team members have put up various definitions of education and there are too many of them we're also going to be muddled up with the definition of education itself that's all i have to say thank you thank you um hello people i'm Yes, sir, Abbas from SRM University, and um, for these two minutes, I was told that we would be allowed to ask questions to the proposition, but I guess that could not materialize in a better way. So I just put forth my, the like like the viewpoints which I heard from these five speakers. The first one saying that the labor skills and the and the life skills, and education gives a common platform to them. I do not understand how a farmer and a person from a person who is pursuing MBA gets a common platform called education. First point. The, the second one says um, that uh, the MBBS and all it gives us a skill not to be afraid of a dead body. I did not get the point. And uh, talking about the Dronacharya thing, uh, you gave the example of Arjun, but I guess Eklavi was a non-educated person and who knew like who skills about the archery well, like, way better than Arjun. Then talking about the fifth speaker who was trying to relate education to economy, let me be very very clear that education is not merely related to money. It's much more than money. I understand that love makes the world go round, but but money buys a ticket. But still, education is not the thing which actually controls the economy. Okay, the the seventh person, the girl from MOP, ma'am, um, your again like as my co-partner said, talking about Kamraj, the, like, like the new like the no education thing. But you rightly pointed out that if he would have education, he would have been at a way better place. But still. If he hasn't got the education what he actually could have, then the could have cannot be justified. So we take our point into this. Then talking about the cooking skills, it does not need any education. Okay. So last but not least, the last speaker, she said that um, we need, we are spending a lot of money to get into various good colleges and all, but I guess the person you're like the first speaker he's from IIT I guess he pays the least of the fees and he will be like the most paid person at the end of the day so with this I would like to end my face thank you thank you and now the core team will begin their reports check yeah before I start I would want to point out that speaker number five has officially closed down all the hotel management institutes in the country because he feels that cooking skills require no education <laughs> now getting to the point of all the five speakers they all mention that knowledge is very important and it is a must but they don't mention how to impart the knowledge. Sitting with a glass full of water here, having free food in ITC Grand Chola, it is a very easy statement to make when 33% of the population in the country is surviving with less than 37 rupees a day. And all they need is a skill to earn the 5 bucks more to feed their children. And now if you act Speaker number one said skill building is ineffective. Then ladies and gentlemen, why are you wasting your time here? Isn't this whole conclave based on skill building and how it has been effective till now and why we should take it forward? And knowledge itself has been redefined through skills. I was talking personally of a program I'm teaching at Eureka. There, multiplication is defined as a skill. If a, if a student is able to multiply, he has the skill to multiply. So knowledge, if imparted in ways of a skill, could help in skill building and holistic development. And then people said, uh, skill building produces imitators and are not innovators. Oh sorry, all skills are not to be learned. Skills are divided into basic skills, similar to how knowledge is basic knowledge and special knowledge. So you have special skills, someone is a dancer, someone is a singer, someone is a superstar, someone is a cricketer. So I don't think we are producing imitators if we do it in the right way. And finally, I would like to go back to my interpretation and perspective of education. I believe that education is a pursuit of wholeness where we develop four major dimensions of life, mental, physical, social and moral. And I believe that if we do it in a very well implemented and holistic way, then skill building is a true reason why we need to do this. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. Well, starting with the point put forward by my friend, I did not talk that education is just skill. I talked about education is KSA, that is knowledge, skill and attitude. Well, 
I would like to put forward a point which was mentioned by, imita uh, by Apurva, imitation versus innovation. I would again say skills are the prerequisite for innovation. If you end up making the same tire again, you would never uh, uh, actually innovate to make something new. If you do not know that a bicycle tire is already invented, how would you actually develop a new one? So, I would say that skills are the prerequisites to innovation. You also mentioned patent filing as one of the skills. I would say that is more like a game theory and not skills. <laughs> Talking about thinking minds as put forward by Ujvala, well, thinking I feel is also a skill. That was also mentioned by my friend Priya Darshani in the cognitive thinking uh, as a skill. Uh, my friend Pawan mentioned about the meta layer, learning to learn. Learning to learn is not knowledge. Learning to learn is again a skill. And that is what we are talking about. It is not knowledge, it is a skill. Well, that's all from my side. I would like to start with, first of all, someone said that knowledge is most important and skill building is not necessary. If that was so, then I guess most of the institution in the world needs to get shut because Stanford and Cambridge are, move, are actually uh, building up uh, skill building programmings and uh, most of the enrollments nowadays is into those programmings. In fact, uh, Stanford uh, recently started with a massive online co open course and 10% of the uh, Indian population, more than 10% of the Indian population are their uh, enrollment. Moving on to the next point where somebody said that uh, uh, talking about economy and how skill building is not very important for the education and economy, then I guess that government is really, most of the popular nation government is wasting their money when they are actually investing in uh, skill development research centers because I have statistics here which says that US is spending around 7% of the economy in skill building research centers, Germany 23 and China is one of the biggest investors because it's estimated that out of, out of 1 million uh, people, 70 people are their skill researchers. So I think uh, the economy needs to shut down as well because they are really wasting their money. And um, if uh, that was the case, then why, is the gov why are various governments of the nation starting with the missions which are based on skill development? Like, can uh, like the government of Canada has started uh, with a a mission for human resource and skill development and are trying to bring in latest technologies used for developing nations. That's all I would like to say. Um, I could off. Good evening, everybody. Okay, um, from my rebuttal, I would like to say when John Dewey says educational preparation for life, education is life itself, life is an experience. You have bad experiences and you educate yourself from those experiences. You usually say bad experience educated me. Educate experience and education come together. So that so, and when I say when I say Kamraj was not educated, I mean I I have to uh, congratulate him. Good point. But the, my point is when a person with such good talent is working on it to make it a skill. I'm pretty sure he didn't know he was a great speaker as a child. He, maybe he was just talking and he realized he had a skill and he developed on that skill. Talking in front of 50,001 lakh people is not easy. Even for a politician, you need that kind of skill. Secondly, when you're talking about life, you're talking about experience, you're talking about survival techniques. That's why I use cooking skill as an important skill. You need to survive. One of you mentioned a mechanic who's not educated, but he is a great worker and our parents get his help to, you know, fix our cars. But that's a skill, right? He's worked on that skill. He's given it that, that commitment to make that skill. And that's why a well-educated person is asking him to repair his car. And the second thing is, interpersonal skills are not just to fit into the society. Interpersonal skills are also for mental satisfaction. You can't just go up to somebody and talk to them in a rude manner because you can. You know that is wrong. Interpersonal skills are teaching you how do you approach a person to give you that mental satisfaction. Yes, I've spoken to the person in a well-behaved manner. Thank you. Hi, I would basically like to clarify and answer some questions posed first. Uh, I think somebody said that to fit in society, it's basically character. 
Okay, I'll just give you an example of Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory. He doesn't fit into society at all because he hasn't been able to develop that certain set of skills. That's basically my first point. The second point being, I think almost everybody in the opposition spoke about knowledge being the raison d'etre of education. Okay, fine. What do you do with the knowledge? You just have the knowledge. What happens to it? It's useless without the skill. So basically, for example, engineering is a knowledge. You have the knowledge for engineering. You want to become an engineer. So you go to school, you go to college, you sit through an interview, etc., etc., to become an engineer. So basically, all your skills here are tested, not your knowledge. Okay, and, the, and also another point about, uh, the, somebody said education is not the center of the economy. I would definitely like to clarify the point because education is the center of the economy. Everywhere in the world today, people are talking about education. People want to bring about reforms in the education system. There are articles in the paper every day about education. There are more than a lakh colleges just in India. How can you say education is not the center of the economy? And also another point being uh, to lead a success, I said that leading a successful life is the most important thing. Well, I don't know how, most of us here are from engineering colleges or from medical colleges or doing an MBA. I don't, I think there are very, very few people here who want to become scientists or who want to become researchers. At the end of the day, as much as we like to deny it, the product of education is we want to earn money. We want to lead a happy life and we want to survive in this world for which we need our skills, for which we need education. Thank you. Thank, thank just, you, boys and girls. Just 10 seconds. Just 10 seconds. Okay. We, as the opposition team, were not denying the importance of skills. We only said that skill building is not the reason for the existence of education. Thank you. Yeah, what we are saying is skill building is the reason for the existence of education. Yeah. Thank you again. Uh, and now I would like to have the judges sum up you know their thoughts on the topic. Okay, thank you very much. I think that it was uh, very enlightening to know that we educate you in public speaking and that's a skill. So I think that it's something that you, we need to be proud of and I just want to make that clarification that whether you're doing knowledge or whether you're getting skills, both need education and you've shown, shown that, that very well by your own example. So congratulations. Uh, you were animated, you were enthusiastic, uh, you were all structured and you gave us a lot of thinking. So our job, and we have a consensus, which is quite uh, unique, I think. So I'll just give you the three uh, who kind of gave, made it really because they were really outstanding. Um, so our medical student, Ujwala. <laughs> you really, in our view, all three of us independently have rated you at the top. Right? So thank you. The second is Ayush, um, very close second. And the third, almost neck and neck Kapoorva, because on mine you tie with him and with the others it's up and down. So very close, actually you're both seconds, Ayush and Apurva. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Ayer, if we could have your views also. Okay, cool, cool. Mission, if you could take over. Thank